morning and welcome to St. Paul's. Before I start, I have two confessions to make. One, as I, I wrote all of my materials and put them together this morning before the events of the past few days. So I'm not going to allude specifically to those, my feelings about those. My second confession is that I'm an angry Christian. I am so angry about, about things that are happening in the world right now. Anyway, uh, that, that goes right into the theme of my call to worship. A call to worship today is based on a question. How can I become a better Christian? An answer comes from Matthew 419. Come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Also, from a bluegrass gospel song that's sung by Rhonda Vincent called Fishers of Men. Some of you may have heard me allude to this before. It goes like this. Rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Peter, John, and James could never be the same after they heard him say, I'll make you fishers of men. He said, rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Cast your nets aside and join the battle tide. He will be your guide to make you fishers of men. He said, rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Jesus bore the cross to gather in the lost. Oh, what a mighty cost to set us free from sin. He said, rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Now let us sing the hymn of praise with uh, number 494. They'll know we are Christians.
pray with me. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace we have in you. As we gather here today, we know you promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there also. As we gather to praise and worship, may you come and fellowship with us. Your blessings are sweet and overflowing. Thank you because you are all, because you always hear us. Now, hear us again as we pray the perfect prayer. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those, those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. First scripture reading comes from the song comes from the Song of Solomon, chapter eight, verses six through seven. Set me as a seal on your heart, a seal on your arms, for love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. It flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of one's house, it would be utterly scorned. Good morning. It is so good to be together, um, especially after some time away. I'm seeing some new faces and some faces I haven't seen in a very long time. And so, especially in the midst of a really hard time for our country and our world, I'm just thankful that we can be together this morning. At this time, I want to invite any of our preschool and elementary age kids who want to attend Worship and Wonder to go with our greeter, Lily. Um, a reminder for parents that if your kids do go, you can pick them up in the Brown Building after worship. Speaking of kids, I am super thankful that right now our new nursery supervisor, Shannon Santos, is down in the nursery caring for some of our kids along with our um, children's ministry assistant, Kelsey. So after months and months of looking for someone to help out in the nursery, we are super thankful for Shannon and super thankful there will be a place for our youngest kids to hang out um, during worship. This upcoming week is full of special events and worship services as we begin the season of Lent. So I hope you will consider joining us throughout the week. On Tuesday, we are going to have a Mardi Gras pancake dinner at our sister church, Community UCC, on Dixie Trail. Um, I've heard they are going all out with lots of 
pancakes and toppings. Um, they will have some beads, and you're invited to wear purple and green um, to celebrate a time of indulgence before we enter into the season of Lent. You don't have to bring anything if you show up, but they do ask that you RSVP by today. So if you think there's a chance you might go, um, go ahead and fill out that form that's in the midweek email, or just let Diane or I know, and we can submit your RSVP. So I hope to see you there for a fun evening of fellowship and good food. This Wednesday, we will observe Ash Wednesday. Um, we will have worship here in the sanctuary at 7. Our siblings from Community UCC will come over this way on Wednesday night to join us. Um, the combined choir will practice at 6.30. Then St. Then Paul's choir will have their practice following the Ash Wednesday service. Um, if you can't join us in person, the service will also be streamed on our Facebook page. Um, but also, if you're unable to join us in the evening and you want to pause during your day to observe Ash Wednesday, Diane and I will be doing our drive through ashes in the parking lot, which we did last year and seemed to be really appreciated by our local community. So you can also come by, stay in your car between 8 and 9 a.m. or between 11.30 and 12 p.m. during that lunch hour, um, and you will receive a blessing, and we can either impose the ashes on your forehead or you can self-impose if that makes you more comfortable. So there are many ways to connect and observe Ash Wednesday um, this week. Then on Thursday evening, um, we will begin offering our weekly yoga and meditation hour that will take place throughout the season of Lent. Um, a friend of Kathy Crowley Jones, Sophia, is a trauma-informed yoga teacher. And so it's a way to uh, connect with our bodies during the season of Lent. All ages, all experiences are welcome. You can wear comfortable clothes, bring your yoga mat. We also have some if you don't have, some, if you don't have a mat. Um, maybe a couple of bucks for a love offering for Sophia, but a, a neat spiritual practice you can commit to to mark the season of Lent. Um, so you're invited. That'll be every week. You can come once. You can come every week, um, whatever is helpful for you. Then on Saturday, um, the Habitat for Humanity Interfaith Build begins, just a full week. So it'll be our framing day on Saturday, um, an amazing time to gather with people of other faiths and begin work on a house. So we have a couple more volunteer spots if you're interested. Um, the work day is from 8.15 until 3.30. So if you have questions or want to sign up, you can talk with Diane about that. Um, last but certainly not least, next Sunday, we are so excited to resume Sunday school for all ages for the first time in two years. <laughs> Um, yes, that's something to be excited about. <laughs> we will have classes for children of all, children and youth of all ages, Bible stories for ESL beginners, and a new gathering for adults just during the season of Lent um, titled Sacred Conversations. So Sacred Conversations is about intentional community and strengthening relationships with people in different demographics around St. Paul's. We have our 902 worshipers, our 11 o'clock worshipers, our Mountain Yard members, our native English speakers, longtime members, new members, and this is a chance to sit across the table from people you might not know too well um, and hear more of their story, hear more about their faith journey, um, another practice you could commit to during the time of Lent for some intentional community. So even if you're an adult who didn't attend Sunday school in the past, I invite you to commit to being a part of Sacred Conversations during the season of Lent. Just like our other Sunday school classes, that will take place at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. So details about everything I just shared and more can be found in the midweek emails. You can also go to stpauls.net backslash Lent for all sorts of details. We do have our Lenten devotionals along with a printout of what's happening during Lent um, on a table in the narthex. So definitely pick one of those up. On your way out. I also wanted to just have a quick note. Um, oh, and next Sunday is first Sunday food drive. Tom gave me the reminder, so bring some canned goods with you next week. Um, we sent out an email on Friday. Obviously, the city of Raleigh is shifting to now masking being optional. Um, we talked about how at this time at St. Paul's, we were going to ask folks to keep wearing masks, especially for the younger folks in our midst who are um, still don't have a vaccine, but hopefully soon, as well as those who are immunocompromised. Obviously, for us, the top priority is always hospitality and that everyone can come and worship. Um, we are going to be sending out a quick survey just to kind of get the pulse of the congregation um, about what folks are most comfortable with at this time. We know it's always changing, 
But look out for that survey next week. We value your feedback. In the midst of all that's going on in our world, especially the invasion in Ukraine, it can feel overwhelming when we enter into a time of prayer like we're about to do. We don't know what to pray or where to even begin. So I named that for us. I know that at St. Paul's, we are a people of prayer and action. We pray and we move our feet to serve. We pray and we give to places like Week of Compassion, who is on the ground doing the important work. We pray and we continue to bear witness to the suffering all around us so that our compassion may grow. Many of us have probably also heard about the anti-queer, anti-trans legislation that is being considered in Texas and Florida that would remove protections for LGBTQ folks in these states going so far as to charge parents with child abuse who support gender-affirming care for their transgender child. On this Transfiguration Sunday, as we worship a God who transcends time, space, materiality, and gender, we declare that trans people and all queer people are beloved by God. We worship a God who is on the side of the oppressed, who knows what it means to be marginalized who joins those in Ukraine and all around the world in their suffering. So holding all of this, let us join God in prayer. God of peace and reconciliation, this morning we pray for the people of Ukraine as they live with the Russian invasion and bombing of cities. As we watch videos and news clips, it is hard to comprehend what we are seeing. Families in bomb shelters, hospital patients in bunkers, parents taking up arms to protect their children. Oh God, comfort them as they shelter and worry. On this Transfiguration Sunday, we pray that hearts of stone would be transformed, that the wisdom of diplomacy would bring healing to broken places, that all would lay down their weapons, that we would commit ourselves to peacemaking so that all of your creation may experience safety and flourishing. Transcending God, we also pray for all of your children who are transgender and non-binary. We give thanks for families, teachers, social workers, faith communities who have grown in their understanding of identity and are committed to the flourishing of all children. God of solidarity, be with the advocates and activists working to push back against discrimination and hatred May we continue to create and preserve communities where all children, including LGBTQ kids, are safe and know they are deeply loved by you. In the midst of all the headline news, we are still carrying the burdens of grief for loved ones who have died. We are still accompanying family members in hospice care and chemotherapy treatment. We are still journeying through a pandemic, hopeful that brighter days are ahead. We believe that you are a God of new life, of resurrection, of hope. That you are a God who makes a way when there is no way. Thank you for being with us in our suffering, for empowering people like those that we have compassion to be agents of compassion, justice, and reconciliation. This week, may we carry your love, peace, peace, and justice wherever we may go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Last December, when the Marshall Fire swept through Boulder, Colorado with little warning, many people's homes were reduced to ashes, including my cousin's mom, uh, Aunt Linda. She was able to throw a few precious items in her car as she fled like some of her handmade quilts, but everything else she owned burned to the ground. And then a few weeks ago, a team of Baptist volunteers came to help sift through what remained. They picked through the ashes and took screens to sift the debris, looking for small mementos or valuables that could be salvaged. And though they didn't find a lot of monetary value, they did manage to collect a few sentimental items that could be kept. We come to this table sometimes feeling like we have little of worth left to offer God. Like our spirits have been singed by the losses and the hurt that we have encountered or seen in the world. But here, God sifts through what we bring, finding value in us that we might struggle to see. Even when we are weary, God finds a spark of new life in us. Even when we are angry, God finds the source of love that remains deep in us. Even when we may only see our mistakes, God finds the goodness that is still at our core. So let us come to this table today humble and ready for God to search us and restore us. Let us come to this table ready to let go of what holds us back from seeing and living into God's vision of us. Let us pray. As we gather around your table to share communion this morning, O God of the poor and the powerful, we know that there are people just down the street and all around the world who will not taste the nourishment of bread or the sweetness of the cup today. As we celebrate your abundance, we are mindful of those who know little but deprivation and despair. In our gratitude for what you have provided for us here, may your spirit unsettle us until all sit at the same table with us and share in the bounty of your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We remember that gathered at a table with friends, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Every time you eat this, do it in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and said, this is my love poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink this, know that you are loved and forgiven. We offer these gifts, O God, in the spirit of love. May these gifts that we offer today and every day embody our loving response to your unconditional love for us. Through these gifts, may others see clearly the love of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Thank you for sharing your love through music today. Let's now hear Paul's words about love from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, What is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. After a tornado, a hurricane, a wildfire, or a war, what remains? After the loss of a home, a loved one, or even an entire neighborhood, what remains? At First Christian Church of Mayfield, Kentucky, what remained after a tornado swept through the town last December was the communion table. Covered in debris, but intact at the front of the sanctuary a powerful symbol of God's love that cannot be shaken. In this beautiful letter to the Corinthians that we just heard, Paul tells us that faith, hope, and love remain. But the greatest is love. When we go through those challenges in life that cause us to grow and mature, when we go through the hardest experiences of our lives, All the talents and resources we're used to depending on may not be enough to get us through. But love remains. Too often we're shown a picture of love that is sentimental and soft, that makes love seem like a pushover. But Paul describes a kind of love that is tough and resilient, a love that is persistent, and strong, a love that remains in the face of fear and loss. So what exactly does this kind of love look like? A love that stands strong in the face of gale-forced winds and blazing fires. A love that endures droughts, pandemics, and even death. Through our support, For a week of compassion, 
we foster the kind of love that remains with people across the United States and around the world. Week of Compassion is the agency within the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, that responds when there are natural and human-made disasters by partnering with local organizations to provide immediate relief and fund rebuilding efforts and long-term development projects, as well as refugee resettlement. Long after the news turns its attention elsewhere after a crisis, Week of Compassion remains in a community for months and even years, continuing to help people recover, witnessing to God's tenacious and resilient love. In Haiti, that love is a long hike up a hill. Love is a school with strong walls and a roof. Love is water and sand. After Hurricane Matthew it devastated a community in Haiti in 2016, the area needed a new school building. The site of the old school was not accessible by vehicles. So community members used their own bodies, as well as their donkeys and horses, to carry supplies up from the bottom of the hill to the construction site. And they worked to improve the road along the way. A local school teacher, Ernzo Lewis Charles, reports, the school building we had before was not constructed well. During Hurricane Matthew, we thought it could serve as a shelter but unfortunately, it was among the first buildings that were affected. When the school was destroyed, we had no hope for reconstruction. We used tarps, but whenever it rained, the children got wet. And when it rained for weeks, the school had to close. Week of Compassion Partners taught sustainable construction techniques to the community so that the new school is soundly built to resist future hurricanes and disasters. Louise Charles Lucette, a mother of two students, says, I helped carry water and sand. And when we saw how the foundation and trenches were being dug, we were happy because it was different from how we had seen construction done before. Now, wherever we go, we are proud of the way we hear people talk about this school how beautiful it is, and such good quality construction. The school director, Luxama Jean-Baptiste, says, this work was not done for one person, but for the community and the next generation. One of the school's committee of parents, Marinelle, said, hats off to the population of Casavon, because whenever I announced there was work to do, the people came. When we live together in a community, it's important to join hands to produce something good. In the aftermath of one of Haiti's most difficult seasons in recent years, your gifts of love to Week of Compassion provided this community materials to build six new classrooms, four latrines, an office, and a 13,000-gallon water reservoir but it provided much more than that. Through this new school, your tangible gifts of love will last for generations to come. In Indonesia, love is organic compost and fertilizer. Love builds friendships, confidence, and small businesses. Milani lives in the Balambog village of Indonesia, an area where most people rely on farming to earn their living. As a changing climate affects harvest, families such as hers must find ways to adapt. The DREAM team, which stands for Disaster Risk Reduction Through Enhanced Adaptive Measures, is a program of church world service supported by Week of Compassion. The partnership supports community savings groups, including the one that Emilani joined, which is run by women in Balambag. 
These farmers each contribute to the group and then are able to take out loans to meet basic needs, expand businesses, or otherwise work toward economic stability. Week of Compassion partners provide workshops about organizational and bookkeeping skills, as well as sharing climate-adapted farming practices with the group so they can continue farming even in the dry season. Imalani says, I never miss a group meeting because the opportunity to learn new things is so great, not to mention the friendships that bloomed within our group. With each passing month, we continue motivating each other to grow our incomes. Some of the new things Imalani learned from the group were how to make organic compost, fertilizers, and pesticides. Her garden began to flourish with these new techniques, but Emilani didn't stop there. She decided to take a risk and plant vegetables during the dry season, making $54 from her first dry season harvest. These additional funds helped cover living expenses for her son so that he could go to school. Her success has encouraged others to also plant during this season. Now they can all sell their harvest at the market or share their vegetables with neighbors year-round. Through your gifts to Week of Compassion, programs like DREAM not only empower women to maintain a stable farming income in a shifting climate, they also help women to dream bigger dreams. The climate-adapted farming practices, in addition to the business managing workshops, have given these women the confidence and the skills they need to thrive year-round through farming and through the community bond of friendship they've developed. When you give to Week of Compassion, you are participating in the kind of love that offers the women of Balambag a pathway to a sustainable future where the entire community can thrive. In Ohio, love is shelter. Love is a path forward when hope seems lost. On Memorial Day 2019, tornadoes swept through the Miami Valley of Ohio, destroying thousands of homes and apartments and leaving a trail of downed trees and power lines in their wake. Many of the affected families have had to relocate multiple times since the tornado due to substandard housing conditions and inflated rent. Two years after the storm, the Stevens family were still unable to find an adequate place to live. And so the family of 10 was forced to divide up and live apart. In addition to dealing with fraudulent contractors who took their money and disappeared, the family had to haggle with insurance companies as they tried to rebuild their home. The Stevensons, like many other families, remained in temporary housing and separated as they waited for repairs to be finished. But all was not lost. They connected with the Miami Valley Long-Term Recovery Operations Group, a volunteer team, and volunteer teams showed up to finish the repairs on their home. Along with traditional home repair projects, with support from Week of Compassion, the Miami Valley, Valley Recovery Group helped launch a new homeownership project for tornado survivors to alleviate the housing crunch that the Dayton area was experiencing. Volunteers and local nonprofits work to transition nuisance properties and vacant lots into affordable housing for tornado survivors whose rental units were destroyed, which creates greater stability both for the families and the community. First time homeowners can receive the support they need to build for their futures. On the U.S.-Mexico border, love is holding hands and singing. Love is families reunited. Many of us have gone weeks, months, or even more than a year without seeing our beloveds during the pandemic. 
Meanwhile, family separation has been even an even harder and longer reality for many immigrants. For March 21st, 2020 through November 8th, 2021, 597 days, the U.S. land borders with Mexico and Canada were closed to non-citizens for non-essential travel. This pandemic policy meant that loved ones on either side of the border were physically unable to travel to one another by car. In June 2021, many of us were celebrating the rise of vaccination rates, the decrease of COVID-19 cases, and the thought that life was returning to normal, or at least some version of it. However, many families were still unable to travel or see one another. Alejandra Rosas, the wife of Reverend Pedro Ramos of Comunidad Lehman Christian Church in Tucson, Arizona, was in exactly this situation. Living near the Arizona border, Alejandra's mother and aunt have border crossing cards that allowed them to enter for short visits. However, they too were unable to travel to the U.S. during the pandemic. They were the only two still residing in Mexico. Their 10 siblings and their 87-year-old mother had become U.S. citizens and resided in the U.S. When the matriarch of this family went into hospice care, all became worried. When the doctor said she had weeks left to live, they became hopeless because the border was closed. When the doctor said she only had days left, they were ready to go to the border and beg for entry to be at their mother's bedside. Alejandra reached out to Disciples Immigration Legal Counsel. As the immigration attorney who assists Disciples pastors and their families, Natalie Teague strategized for a solution. Within days, she had worked with the family to compile an emergency humanitarian petition for one entry for Alejandra's mother and aunt. I honestly didn't think it would work, but we had to try, she said. Within days, Customs and Border Patrol responded asking for the proposed date and time. Two days later, Alejandra went to the border and picked up her mother and aunt. It was the first time they had seen one another in person in well over a year. Five days later, their mother died. However, in the last days, all 12 siblings were able to surround their mother's bedside. All she wanted was to hear her children sing to her one last time. Her final wishes were granted. This is how love remains, responds, and brings families home. These stories show that the enduring love Paul speaks of to, to the Corinthians is still alive today all over the world. As we close worship today, I invite you to take the heart that is inserted in your bulletin and finish the phrase, love is, with what love looks like to you. How have you seen this kind of patient persistent, powerful love at work in your life or in the community. And on your way out of the sanctuary today, you can add your heart to the clothesline out front. Or if you're worshiping online today, you can type your response in the chat, telling us how you would finish the phrase, love is. Let us remember that even in life's most difficult moments, love remains. And that love can transform the world.
invite you to join in the benediction. Um, your response is just, we give you thanks, O oh God. So every time I raise my hand, if you will say, We give you thanks, O oh God. Let us pray. Love is a drink of clean water and a breath of clean air. For the opportunity to contribute to these necessities, we give you thanks, O oh God. Love is a warm blanket given to a refugee family in an unfamiliar place. For the opportunity to wrap another in the fabric of love. We give you thanks, O oh God. Love is a pathway to home ownership after a t tornado rips through a community. For the opportunity to bring another person home. We give you thanks, O oh God. Love is people responding to the needs of a hurting world, trusting that love can make a difference. For the opportunity to respond in our own community, we give you thanks, O oh God. Love is people serving their neighbors, believing that transformation is possible. For the opportunity to transform the world, we give you thanks, O oh God. Let us go ready to give and receive the never-ending love of God. Amen.